Hi there, my name is Rusty Butt. This lesson focuses on how to make a Raycast Blaster. I think it's about time you got your first weapon. This lesson uses the Raycast Gun Project Kit. You can find that in my public folder. Just open up Rusty Manufacturing. The link to it will be in the description. Go to Welcome to Resonate Tutorial Objects, Project Kits, and look for it in there. Before we get into the circuit, let's explain what a Raycast is. So go into Browse Nodes, go into Physics, and then get Raycast 1. This node has an impulse input, two impulse outputs, and then quite a few other inputs and outputs, but what we're going to be using right now is origin, direction, and root. So pop out one for each of these, and then before we can give it a test, we'll also need to use the debug duration, and I'm going to set this to something like 0.5. So that means we'll see a little visual for half a second after firing this node. Now, if I try to call it right now, nothing's going to happen because I'm giving it an origin of zero, but a direction of also zero, which is not valid. So I'm just going to put a one in the end here, which gives it a forward direction. That is one along the forward Z axis. So I hit call. We see a pulse, so it has hit something, but we don't know where. Next thing I'm going to do is give it a slot input because the origin right now being zero, zero, zero with nothing in there means it's actually coming from root. So I'm going to just select my hand real quick and give my hand casing the origin. I can see that my hand casing is facing this way. So if I deselect that and hit call, it shoots a ray out of my hand in the direction I've specified. If I want to give it a different origin, for example, 0.2 forward, now it comes out slightly in front of my hand and I can actually hit other things. So what this is really doing is just selecting a point in space that you designate and shooting a line out from it, then returning whether or not it hits something. So now you understand raycasting, and you have the project kit. The next thing we're going to do is instance out the hit effect. What I mean by that is how I have this blue laser. We're going to take our hit effect, which is in storage there, duplicate it, and then bring the duplicate out into the world and animate it. So to start, we'll set our raycast gun project kit as the root of the raycast, and set the distance to something more like 0.13. That way it comes directly out the barrel. Then we're going to go into slots and grab a few things here. So number one is we're going to grab destroy slot and put that off to the side for a moment. We're going to grab duplicate slot and set parent. These two are going to be for moving the hit effect into whatever we hit. So we'll use that as our template. Hit effect goes in here. And then we're going to set the parent of the new duplicate to whatever we hit, but we can't plug that directly in there, so we need to get get slot. This takes the collider that we hit and returns the slot that it's on. Then we can just plug that in there and we're good. Now, in between duplicate and set parent, we should go into info and do set slot persistent self, and we're going to trigger this to false. The reason being, we don't want to accidentally leave anything behind if it fails to destroy for some reason. We're going to move on hit from raycast into here. And then we're going to put destroy slot a little bit further, move our inspector over, maybe put the template up here. So from here, we have a new duplicate. We've set the parent, but we haven't moved it or told it to do anything, which means we're going to need to take the hit point from the raycast and use that to determine where our template is supposed to be moved to. So we're gonna go back out and scroll down a little bit to transform. We're going to set global position right here. Again, setting of the duplicate to the hit point of the raycast. Then we're gonna just plug that right in. And we're also going to set the forward direction to the hit normal. Now, a normal is when you hit a surface, there will be a direction perpendicular to that surface. What we want is for our blast to fly away from whatever we hit so that when you explode something, it doesn't just burst into it or something like that. We're going to go into direction. We're going to do set forward. Again, of the duplicate, follow the chain, and plug the hit normal into there. Okay, so now we've moved our template into the right spot and it's facing the right direction, but we haven't told it to do anything. This is where dynamic impulses can come into play. So we're going to go into flow async and get an impulse receiver and an impulse trigger. This acts as a wireless transmitter and a wireless receiver. This node can be packed 
somewhere else. It doesn't have to be in the same circuit as the trigger. But when we pulse this, given it has the same tag as right here, this is sort of its wireless code, and we target the right hierarchy, where this is underneath whatever slot we put in here, then before moving on to this output, it will wait for anything this triggers to complete. So this way, we can send our signal to animate our projectile, have the animation happen, and then only after it's done, destroy the instance so that it cleans itself up. All we have to do to add this to our circuit is decide on a tag, which I'm going to use projectile hit for, and then send the signal to the duplicate. Destroy the duplicate afterwards, make these a part of the chain, and then because this isn't an async task, we have to make it an async task. So there's a node called start async task. Just put that in between the call and the raycast, and we are good to go. Now, remember, this node is not currently packed into the hit effect. So then what we're going to do is give it something that takes time to complete, such as audio, play one shot, and wait. So this will play a sound effect. It'll trigger here. I can put the clip in there. You can find something on freesound.org. You can use the microphone tool within Resonite to just make a sound and then use that. I already have one prepared from before. It sounds like this. And then I'm going to give the root of the sound effect a slot reference. That's where it will play from. I want it to play from the hit effect. Now, I don't have to use the duplicate here because I'm going to pack this into animation, meaning anything under hit effect that gets duplicated like we're doing will be self-referential. So I'm going to take animation, pack that into it, and now when I hit call, our hit effect plays, and then you can see that little white dot, and it disappears after the sound effect is done. And that's the basic functionality pretty much complete. I can hit call, and it makes a sound when it hits a point. Now, we know the Raycast is working, so I'm going to get rid of the debug time, which means there's no more little line visual. But we're going to make our own little line visual, as well as some particle effects, using these slots that I've prepared earlier. So we'll unpack animation again, and to start, we'll do the particles. We're going to take the enabled state on the circle emitter and pull out a source for it, and then we're going to use a write to turn that on when the projectile hits. So that's in actions, write, value write, bool, We'll get one of these, set the source to the target, set the value to true, and make it trigger on the sound starting playing. Now, when I pack that and clear the gizmo, I'll shoot this, and we can see the projectile burst. Next, unpack animation again. We're going to make a beam appear from the hit point to the gun. So to do that, we're going to need to transform the gun's global point into the projectile's space, because what I've got here is a segment mesh that has two points on it, and it'll draw a line between them. So we're going to go back out, down a little to transform, conversion, global point to local. This will do the converting for us. And we're also going to get global transform. This will be our gun. So we're going to convert the global position of our gun, that is the gun project kit, but rather I'm gonna use the barrel because that's where the bullet's actually coming from. And we're going to be converting that into the space of the hit effect right here. So let me just move these over like so. Put this on the other side so it's a little bit cleaner. There we go. I'm going to use another right. This time it'll be a float three. And I'm going to set that to point B of the segment mesh. So I'll take out a source for that and make that the target of the right. Then I'll plug it right after this one. There we go. And now when I pack these, clear the gizmo and click, there's our beam. It'll go away after the slot gets destroyed. Now, we don't want it just sticking there either. So we're going to unpack animation one last time. And we're going to go back up to actions, get a tween value, and a float version of it. So what we're going to do is make the radius of the beam shrink after it gets fired. So take out a target input for the tween, put it after the right here so that it triggers at the same time as everything is kicking off, grab the beam's radius reference, drop it in here, 
and we want it to animate from its current value of 0.01 to 0. And I've generally found that half a second, that is 0.5, works pretty well for this. So we'll pack this in here, and now when we fire, there's our beam effect. Okay, now we just need a way to trigger this that isn't hitting a button in the circuit. So instead of this, let's get a device controller standard controller. You can use whatever sort of controller you would like, you can use whatever sort of input you would like. In this example, I'm going to be using primary, so that's just left trigger. I'm going to need to go into users to get the active user, active user self, rather, of this object. So whoever's holding it once this is packed. And I'm going to go into flow to get a fire on true so that I can gather a pulse from primary from the active user. Plug that right in here and then go over to the project kit, take shooting, hold secondary on all these to pack it inside. Now when I grab this and click left trigger, it fires. Next, I'm going to unpack this again and we're going to set up a separate branch of the circuit for the visuals. So that means getting a sequence, putting that right after the fire on true, and putting the bottom output here. So sequence splits things up where normally a pulse chain goes through all of the nodes. We want a separate branch here so that if the visuals fail, the function can still work. And if the functions fail, the visuals can still work. In this case, we're also going to need an async task because we're going to be setting the particles to turn on wait two frames and then turn off again so that the particle emitter has time to update. Now for that, we're going to go over to the visuals, get the muzzle flash particles, circle emitter, enabled, and same thing, get a source for that state. Now, as you might expect from that, we're going to go to actions, get a right latch this time, right latch value, bool, here we go, set this as the target, and we'll be turning the particle system on and then immediately after turning it off with, like I said, a two-frame delay in between. Now, for a two-frame delay, we're going to go back to flow, we're going to go to async, and we're going to get an async delay updates. Put a number two in here. This gives just enough time for the Fruits Engine data model to update the fact that the particle system has been turned on and off and allow the visuals to take place. We're gonna start the task by turning on the particles, then we're going to wait two frames, then we're going to turn off the particles. So it gets a little crisscrossy there, but hopefully that's easy enough to follow. I'm going to pack this back in place, get rid of the gizmo, and when I click left trigger, we have a little burst come out around the barrel. Almost done. Now we'll just put a little sound effect when you shoot. So I'm going to again unpack shooting. We're going to go to audio, get a regular play one shot, no need to wait this time pull out a clip input, and like I said before, freesound.org is great. Make a noise with your mouth with the microphone tip, harvest another item that you find in here, whatever works. I have mine already pre-prepared, so I'll be using this. And I'm going to have the root of it come from the Raycast Gun project kit. Then I'm going to go down to the start async task here and get on started, play the sound. Now, once I pack that in here, I just grab this and click left trigger. There we have it. So we're almost there. One final step. I've actually cheated a little bit. Right now, our gun works perfectly fine. As long as we're hitting something. But on miss, nothing will happen. So to demonstrate this, let me quickly turn off my sky panels and my outer shell. And fire off into the sky. You'll see we get now a laser beam, and this pulse display takes one. So what's happening here is the raycast is missing and then not continuing on any of the visual circuit. We're gonna need to override that so that even if it misses, we get a beam. We're gonna go back out to the main part of our node browser, go into flow and get a Boolean toggle. This will control whether or not we've actually hit something. So if we have, we'll plug it in here. If we haven't, we'll plug it in here. Both outputs go into duplicate slot. And now this Boolean will be true if we've hit something and false if not. We can use that to control a conditional, which you can get from operators right here. 
So we plug this into the bottom input there, and we'll plug hit point into the true output, such that if we have hit something, this will be set to true, and then during this pulse context, the conditional will be outputting the hit point of the raycast. So we can plug that into global position, and then on false, it's missed, it hasn't hit anything, so we can have some other point for it to go to. That point is going to be a distance from the gun, so we're going to get the global transform of the gun, transform, global transform, like so, and we're going to get a forward direction of something like a thousand, and this way our hit effect will be one kilometer away from our gun. Essentially, we'll just be shooting off into the distance. So for the final step, we go into operators again, we go into mole, just grab one of those, and what you can actually do is multiply a rotation with a vector, and this will rotate that vector by that quaternion value. So we plug that in here, and now what we have is one kilometer forward rotated by the gun, resulting in one kilometer forward relative to the gun. So if I pack this in place now, and shoot a box, it works fine, and if I shoot into the air, it just shoots a kilometer away. Now you have a weapon, congrats! Or, well, at least, a prototype of one. But you can use these principles to add better lighting, better animation, better sounds, and completely make it your own. I hope to see what you make! Thank you.